finally got one. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Don't mind the Gretsch box, I finally found the rarest Billy Joe Armstrong signature guitar. But if you're not familiar with who that is, it's the Green Day frontman. We've documented a lot of these things on the show, but we'll recap all of his signature models a little bit later on. And I think in every episode I've said this is the hardest one to find, and I finally got it. Let's get our first impressions of the third Billy Joe signature model. It's the double cut TV yellow Les Paul Jr. Finding one of these at all has been very tricky, but let alone in good condition. Let's go ahead and check it out. As we've already previously discussed, it's a double cut Les Paul Jr., which when these things came out in 2012 was kind of a scarce thing, finding one outside of the custom shop that looked exactly like this with the TV yellow finish and still has the wraparound tailpiece. But the big thing about Billy Joe's signatures is the fact that he likes the 60s slim neck profile, so that's what most of his signatures end up having, which is different from the true 50s vintage originals. Being a guy that sells out huge stadiums, he likes to have humless P90s, so that's what came stock in here. They called this the H90 pickup. This is essentially a humbucker that just looks like a single coil because it's got a stacked pickup design. Historically, people who buy these thinking they're getting regular juniors don't really like the pickup, but if you're trying to play live on stage and you don't want the 60 cycle hum, that's what you go to one of these things for. So besides finish and body shape, another unique feature of this one is the Adeline skull on our pick guard. He actually has this as a tattoo on one of his hands. It's a different brand that he owns and has been used as a Green Day logo. And here's a feature you might not have known about these. They feature a Granadillo fret board instead of rosewood. That's why it has a slightly different look to it. This was birthed, you know, right as the government raids were kind of in progress, so they weren't really using a lot of rosewood. They were trying to find more sustainable alternatives that the government wouldn't get all up in their case about, which as we now know, that led to the ebony disappearing for almost a decade in the custom shop, as well as USA models, and pretty much put an end to seeing those on Gibson USA products until 2019. And what we've already seen, the other special feature that these guitars got was the signature Green Day gig bag. So his first signature had a cool case with the leopard print interior, so they followed it up with just a straight up gig bag. Now these things were approximately $1,199 brand new. I've never seen an official trusted source say how many were made, but I will tell you as far as the used market goes, you don't see these things pop up too often, and when they do, they sell within a day. So now that we know about this one, let's talk about the Billy Joe signatures. There have been eight signature guitars within the Gibson family of brands. The initial run was done in 2006. It also had the P90H pickup that was humless, but you gotta remember, at that period of time when those were created, just like these double cuts, you couldn't find a traditionally specced Les Paul Jr. Sometimes they'd have stop bar tail pieces, other times they just weren't full gloss finishes. If you're familiar with what a Les Paul Classic is back from the 90s, you can still buy one of those today and feel like you're getting a custom shop quality guitar, but without actually being produced in the custom shop. Those things are that good. Now they lasted till about the year 2012, and throughout the course of that you had three different finishes, black, white, and sunburst. They all had the cool case we were talking about. But in 2011, his signature J180 acoustic launched. It's got a cool double pick guard to it. That's another rare one you don't see as often, but they pop up from time to time. But then his third signature is the one we're documenting today, the DC Junior, with the cool TV yellow finish. But then they follow that up starting in 2014 with an ES-137 signature. That's another one I haven't documented yet, but it's got a cool red burst finish to it with dual pickups. But then there was a bit of a hiatus for four years until the fifth model in 2018 is the Les Paul Junior humbucker model this time. So no more humless P90s, he just went straight up for the humbucker and gave it an interesting pickguard style based on a DC Specials pickguard layout without the P90 cuts. And those came in an ebony, maraschino cherry, and a cool sonic blue. But then another four years passes and you get an Epiphone release. But at the same time, there was a second Epiphone also launched in a player pack. But just the guitar, brand new, was 550 bucks. The player pack, which includes an amp and other stuff, was only 400. So they are technically two different iterations. And then finally, we have number eight, which is the latest one from 2023. It's the Gibson P90DC pickup version that has the cool silver sparkle finish and the vintage ebony gloss. They had an interestingly bright pink exterior chainsaw reissue case with the return of the leopard print interior. So there you go. As far as I know it, those are the only eight signature Billy Joe models. I'll put in order for you. If I happen to have missed one, let me know. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this one up on there and take an individual look at its parts and specs.
Now that's all cleaned up, let's discover its secrets. So we already told you about the stacked P90, but what exactly does that mean? Well, literally what I said, it is a stack of pickups. So you have your regular P90 right here, but then you have essentially a dummy coil on the back. The Blues Hawk series utilizes something similar, except they don't stack it, they put a dummy coil in the back of the guitar. Uh, that's just one big sandwich here, so it's kind of like a humbucker, but stacked on top of itself instead of our usual one coil here, one coil there, side by side. But within the circuit, that reads 13.23k ohms. Now, if you think that sounds rather hot, it's just because you've got the double coil. Otherwise, you'd still be somewhere around 7 to 8. Check out the very easy to read markings here in bright neon orange, TV, LP, Billy Joe. As far as the route itself, nothing too crazy. With the whole stack design though, I imagine it would be slightly deeper than a regular route. I get about 1.2 inches with my calipers. But that's the bottom of this route. Your tailpiece is the regular wrap it around style. You can see where these strings have left impressions and you can just rock it back and forth with your intonation screws. It's done up by Advanced Plating Incorporated. And you have a master volume and a master tone. Removing our pick guard, how are these constructed? With long neck tenons. I wouldn't expect anything less because when you short neck tenon a double cut junior, usually the neck breaks off. But everything's looking good there. But here's an up close look at the Adeline skull. If you're actually going to buy one of these to gig and play, I would suggest replacing the pick guard simply to keep this one in better shape because that skull does wear away if you scratch at it. This pick guard isn't in perfect condition, but it cleaned up a little bit better than when I had first received it. This was sold to me as excellent condition, so I thought I finally found my white whale, but eh, not exactly. There's a pretty sizable gouge right there. Thankfully, the finish did not break, but as the light runs over it, it's a bit of an eyesore. We also have two light dings down here and an additional one right here. And right over here by the bridge, it must have fell and dinged the finish. You've got a very small finish chip. It's not too noticeable though once that's installed. You definitely won't see it while playing. And this is a mahogany body. There is a pretty visible seam line. If you get it in the light just right anyways, that runs up along here. So with that, I would assume it is at least a three-piece mahogany body. You've got your regular mahogany neck and our Granadillo fretboard. That definitely needed condition and I polished the frets up. The Granadillo has a nice red rosiness to it. It's a little bit more in your face than usual rosewood. Personally, baked maple is my favorite of the rosewood alternative years. But if you're looking for something that feels and looks the part of rosewood, it's just a little bit more red. That's probably why you'd want Granadillo. Baked maple gets really soft and a little bit less rosy. But we have our usual 24 3 quarter inch scale length with a 12 inch fretboard radius with a 1.7 inch nut width that increases to 2.08 by the 12. First fret neck depth 0.85 and stays very slim. Wow, 0.91 by the 12th. That is that signature slim taper neck that these things are known for. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Whereas the face of the headstock, it utilizes a Corian nut with our regular truss rod style. The cover itself is just pure black. And true to vintage spec, you get a decal Gibson logo with the Les Paul model in the center and our button style tuners. However, these are not vintage in style, meaning it's not a bar style tuner. They're all individual. His first run signatures had the vintage ones. That's why I bring it up. But there's that ding we were talking about again. Moving on to the back, honestly most of those buckle marks polished out, but there is a pretty sizable ding right there, as well as a few just scattered about. Not perfect, but not trashed. Back here I can confirm it is a three-piece body. There's the seam line, and the other one just follows up along right there. So basically you have a big middle piece, and then your wings. But our back control plate actually still has the original plastic over top of it. So it's pretty safe to say nothing's ever been touched here. We just have our regular Gibson branded pots and you can see through to the mahogany body. And we have a black plastic output jack with our strap buttons in our regular locations. However, you can tell the pressure of the button has started to flake up the finish right here. As of right now, it's not a chip, but that could become one in the future. Now moving up the back of the neck, you can see the wood grain through this TV yellow finish. It just doesn't really show up too well in the camera, but there's a couple of light impressions on the neck and a few scratches. But here's our individual Cluson Deluxe style tuners with the vintage button tips. And there's our serial number dating it to 2012, 234th day of the year. Initial batch, 309th in production. But besides a little bit of fret sprout along the neck, a ding in the lacquer right here, and some very light buckle scratches on the back, it's, it's one of the cleaner ones I've seen. I'm not too disappointed. Under black light, everything glows the way I would expect it to. 
kind of helps you see some of those dings that we were talking about earlier as well. Most predominantly the one that broke the finish, but the body's good. Headstock is fantastic. Back of the body does have a little bit of sweat absorption in this area right here. That's why it glows a little bit more. I'm not seeing any finish wear to the neck and no brakes, cracks, or repairs. It passes with flying colors. And all said and done, it weighs just a hair over seven and a half pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this rare one sounds. Humless P90s are starting to grow on me. As long as you go into them expecting them to not exactly be as gnarly as normal P90s, I think you can enjoy them. So far, it just kind of sounds like a humbucker because that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> Now we'll do a dynamic test, really hard. Soft. Really soft. So it's got some dynamics to it, but not as much as a normal P90. Now let's try some dirt. Now we know all about the Billy Joe Armstrong signature Les Paul Double Cut Jr. What are my final thoughts? 
Now I know why these things don't show up too often. This is a great little player. When I first saw the double cut shapes in general, they never really appealed to me that much until you kind of start to get more into the music that uses them. This was great for the Green Day stuff, and as long as you go into it thinking this is going to be more so of a humbucker rather than a traditional P90, you're gonna have a good time. If you think it's just a regular junior with a big fat neck and a nice raunchy single coil, you're gonna be very disappointed. <laughs> but anyways, I had a great time with it. I think I'm gonna keep looking for one that's maybe just a little bit cleaner. Not that this one's too bad, but I'm glad I was able to document it anyways. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.